from your most watched, most trusted weather source. Today is a first alert weather day. Well, we are through day one of Debbie's rain, at least three more days of uh, heavy rain expected, though it may start to thin out a little bit or become more isolated. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Most of us have picked up just uh, enough rain to kind of set the ground for flooding issues over the next few days. Flash flood warning still in effect, but getting a little bit of a break within that flash flood warning. Southern Beaufort County to Pamlico County is a little strip that may have seen as high as six inches of rain today. That's going to be an area we're going to have to monitor over the next few days. Still raining from Gum Neck, Columbia down to Ingle Hard, but a steady rain. Nothing that's really going to cause any flash flooding issues. Heavier rain now pushing back across the sound at times and even a little bit of a water spout thread. You can see right through here, uh, maybe a little bit of a water spout uh, trying to move towards the islands, but should split the gap between Ocracoke and Cedar Island. And they've been fizzling out the closer to land they get. Just plain old rain even light rain from Cape Lookout up to Beaufort. You zoom out, a lot of us getting a break in the rain. You notice that the bands aren't as widespread or the rain's not as widespread, but you get these bands and that's where you get those really intense squalls of rain plus a little bit of a spin up tornado thread. You can see the center now over open water where it's expected to stay a tropical system, but there's a lot of dry air. It's kind of fighting it off right now. You can already see some of that dry air stuck in the middle of Debbie with more down to the southwest and northwest. I think this is going to be a big play in our rain chance forecast over the next few days and provide some relief to those who've already seen maybe one to two feet of rain around the Charleston area up to Columbia. We've got less flash flood warnings than earlier as well. So watch what happens. Still very heavy rain. In fact, this major band of rain could cause issues for some of our western and southwestern counties as we head into Wednesday night and maybe even as early as Wednesday afternoon before it shifts across I-95. After that, we never really see the widespread rain come back. Instead, we get these really intense bands of heavy rain, probably be a tornado threat with these as well, and they just linger. They redevelop at times. So within those bands, Ends, that's probably where we're going to get those maybe 10 to 15 inches of rain, while other areas, maybe it's today's rain, tomorrow's rain, a little bit of Thursday's rain. That's kind of all they get. So still think our rainfall totals could be high for some locations, but for those that see those bands of rain, we're still talking about extreme impacts where not only tornadoes possible, maybe close to or over a foot of rain, but also those high impact road closures. The good, the better news is that maybe less of a real estate, maybe uh, less of an area that's going to be impacted by those heavier bands of rain, but still expecting tornado threat to linger for several days. Tomorrow's threat looks a lot like today's did right along the Crystal Coast. As we get into Thursday, that's when all of us are going to have to really pay attention to any quick spin up tornadoes and kind of expect the threat on Thursday to possibly go up a little bit. Strongest winds from Debbie still expected as we head into Thursday. Already see some wind gusts along the coast towards 40 miles per hour. Most of us going to peak with our wind gusts 35 to 45 miles per hour Thursday night, and then winds start to relax as we head throughout the day Friday, but definitely still going to be windy. Just kind of below that threshold where we expect widespread power, out, power outages with the ground so wet, we will have to monitor and see if maybe some trees fall a little bit easier than they typically would. That wind could push up to four feet of storm surge there along the Crystal Coast. All other waterways, one to two feet of inundation. Really think river flooding could be a bigger issue as we head into the weekend and next week. For the coast, for inland areas, temperatures not going to increase much. Going to start to get a little on the breezy side, maybe windier down on the coast, and then we start to see uh, rain chances still be decently high all day long. But the impacts with Debbie may be ending a little bit earlier. Hopefully we can kind of trim the first shore weather days a little bit, uh, but still going to wait for more data. And then we get into the river flooding over the weekend. Already the uh, Cape Fear River, several of our rivers at least expected to get to minor to moderate, but I think the Cape Fear River is already forecast to get to major flood mm -hmm. stage near Chinkapin uh, down towards Burgaw as well. Yeah, there have been a lot of changes, too, with the storm since we've been tracking it. Uh, one thing that's not changed a lot, though, is the speed. It, it kind of wobbles yeah. uh, up and down a few miles per hour, but it's, it's just moving really slow. It's not going to move much the next 48 hours, but once it starts to lift north, it's going to start to pick up speed again. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Zach.